In an ideal world, car engineers and manufacturers would make vehicles so that there wouldn't be any atrocious ride height on regular cars. Because they're not made that way, you'll find amateur car enthusiasts throw just lowering springs on a car, hoping that that will solve that problem. But what they don't realize is that they'll also be bringing a bunch of other issues into the vehicle. So the wheel will actually come in contact with the fender liner and it's gonna rub when the suspension goes into full travel. The lower control arms are also gonna be pointed to the sky because it's not designed to be riding at that level. You may also be bottoming out the shock absorber because the shock absorber isn't designed to work at that level either. So from the title of the video, you guys have an idea what we're gonna be getting into. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to lower your car properly. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna be replacing the factory shocks with the aftermarket springs with a much better all around better kit for this car and for any car for that matter. So I'm gonna be throwing BC coilovers on the vehicle along with an assortment of different parts to make it so that the car is gonna be lowered at the proper height, so that the control arms are gonna be working at the proper height and that everything works together once the vehicle is gonna be lowered. So on this table here, you can see I've got a bunch of really nice brand new parts. So let's start with this side here. I have a set of brand new Skunk 2 fully adjustable rear control arms. These have a spherical bearing on one side, a polyurethane bushing on the other. The arm itself is anodized 7000 series aluminum, so it is extremely light and very strong. From my understanding, these are the only ones that are on the market that are 7000 series aluminum. Everything else is cheaper grade aluminum or steel, which is heavy. Now, you guys also have these parts here that go into the spherical end. If any of this does fail on me down the road, I can get replacement ends here and bushings on this side. So it's a very nice piece for your car. You can get them also in other colors other than gold. Down here, I have a True Heart rear subframe brace. I'm not sure if this is going to fit, but it looks pretty good. We're gonna give this a shot later when we get to the back suspension. Over here, we have a brand new set of Revel coilover covers. Now I purchased two sets in the 325 millimeter size. They have two different sizes that you guys can choose from. This here seems to be good for the front suspension and also for the rear. To fix the front suspension after we install the lowered suspension, these here are parts from Aerogenics. And this here is a roll center correction kit. So it comes with new hardware, a little billet aluminum spacer, and I'm gonna show you guys how to install this shortly. If we need a little bit more camber, we have these parts here from SPC. I'm not sure if I'm going to install them, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. Moving on to the last piece of the puzzle, I have the fully adjustable suspension right here from BC Racing. So this here is the meat and potatoes of the entire install. So I went with BC Racing's DS series. So this uses a digressive piston instead of the regular standard linear piston that you'll find in the BR series. If you guys plan on tracking your car or you guys like driving hard, this is the setup to go with. You guys know the BCs, you can pick whatever spring rate you want, front or back, at no extra charge. If you guys do want Swiss springs, I would suggest getting some after you buy the regular springs so that you have an idea what this spring rate is like and then you can change that from there. In the meantime, I went with the standard rates, so 8K in the front, 6K in the back, pretty soft. We've got fully adjustable suspension, both the top here, here as well. And now depending on the car that you guys have, the coilovers may require new front or rear end links. If they require it, BC Racing will typically supply it. So as you can tell, this set of front end links came included with this kit for my ninth gen Civic, but I also have some that came included with my Mini. Now before we jump into the install, there's one more thing that I need to show you, and that has to do with these two lower mounts for the coilovers. So when you guys buy a set of coilovers for your ninth gen Civic, you will have either the one kind or the other. Now to help determine which one you need for your car, if you have a regular base model, you will need the standard 2012 plus Civic FB. If you have a 2012 or 13 Civic Si, you will also go with this kind here. However, for 14 and 15, Honda decided to change the lower knuckle, and the design of it, as you can tell, is different from here to here. However, that only applies to the 14 and 15 Si. Make sure that you guys order the right kit, and you'll be able to tell that this here is the kit for my car. Now that's enough talking for now, let's get into the install. Given we're working on the vehicle suspension, the car needs to be raised in the air and safely supported with jack stands with the wheels removed. That's going to give us the ability to disassemble what needs to be disassembled. 
I went ahead with removing the windshield wipers and the cowl, which gave me ample space to show you what work needs to be done at the front strut towers. This step isn't necessary, but it does make it a lot easier. To see how I did this, click on this card on the top right of the screen and it will redirect you to another video of mine showing you all the steps to get this done. Following that, we need to get started with working in the wheel well area. To remove the front strut, place a wrench over this nut and a wrench with a socket on the bolt head and take the nut and bolt out from the hole. As for the lower one, remove the nut, but don't take out the bolt yet as there's still components on the strut that needs to be disconnected. The first of which is the wheel speed sensor. Using some needle nose pliers, pinch together the backside of the plastic clip to remove it from the strut. There's two of them, and the second one that I left behind on the strut, you'll need to transfer that to the new coilover during the install, but we'll get there. Remove the single brake line fastener on the other side of the strut, and then you can continue to remove that lower bolt. On the back side of the strut, you'll find the sway bar end link. Remove the upper nut with a socket. Now just a heads up, you might need to place a hex bit on the inside of the bolt so it doesn't spin, but I didn't need to since I don't have OEM links on the car. Do the same thing for the lower end of the link and set it aside. Now at this point, the strut should be disconnected from everything in the wheel well area. We then need to disconnect the strut from the strut tower, which is found in the engine bay. There will be three nuts to remove. After you remove the first two, place your other hand into the wheel well area so that you can grab the strut and prevent it from falling to the ground. Then remove the third nut and then you can slide the strut assembly out from the car. Now when it comes to installing the front coilover, it's going to be actually pretty easy. So make sure that you match up, you know, all this stuff to the stock part. So you're putting the right part on the right side. And then from there, take off the three nuts on the top. And you guys can choose to use these guys. But what I'm actually going to be doing is using the factory nuts that we took off of the car. So you can see here with both of them side by side, they are the same thread pitch and everything, but they're actually different in height. So I'm gonna be using the larger, thicker one, the factory one, but either of them will work. One more thing to take note is ensure that you have the top hat aligned in the correct way. So you'll notice that the, uh, the slots right here are gonna be facing outwards from the car so that you can adjust the camber of the vehicle in and out. If you have this rotated like that, you will not be able to adjust the camber on the suspension. So straight up and down like this. So just like before, where you have one hand in the wheel well area and the other securing the top nuts, get that top hat secured in the strut tower. Now one last thing that I like to do is from inside the wheel well, you'll push against the shock. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna push the entire suspension as much over this way as possible so that if these nuts ever do come loose when you're let's say tracking the vehicle, they'll be maxed out at the inward position, which is gonna be its natural resting spot. Now what you will notice is from down here in the wheel well, you can see how much the suspension, how much higher it is. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the car's gonna be riding that much lower. It just means that the suspension doesn't have the same kind of sag as factory. So with that being said, I'm gonna align this up a little bit and you can see we've got a good, what, four or five inches to bring this up. The easiest way to raise the knuckle with the control arm and axle all attached is going to be with your jack. Slide it under the control arm and pump it until the two knuckle holes line up with the holes on the coilover. Slide the upper bolt through both passages and place the nut on the threads and repeat the same thing for the other bolt. Now you remember that black clip I was telling you about earlier? Well now we need to transfer it over to the new coilover. So position it back onto the wheel speed sensor and press it into the opening on the left side of the coilover cup. Do the same thing with the other clip. With both bolts still free to move, you can see that the knuckle can be rocked. You'll want to push it inwards towards the center of the car prior to securing the knuckle fasteners. This will prevent your alignment from going out of spec if those bolts do decide to loosen under vibrations. Secure the two bolts and then torque them to spec. Grab the small hex bolt for the brake line and secure it into place ensuring the brake line is routed in front of the spindle just like how it was before. Now because of how much higher the entire wheel assembly is up into the wheel well, the sway bar now is going to be tilted way too high upwards. So to accommodate for that, we have different end links. Grab the new end link for the front suspension and route it behind the brake line. Take note of the orientation as the end links are side specific. You'll know once you have one end in and try to install the other, it won't line up nicely. 
And I'll give you guys three guesses to how I know this. <laughs> now, as for the front suspension, the coilovers are in. The other modifications that we're gonna be doing are not complete. However, we're gonna get started with the rear of the car. So we're gonna install the rear coilovers. And these are a little bit different than the fronts because the fronts are a true setup. So it's a McPherson strut with the spring and coilover or the shock absorber together in one unit. The rear is a divorced setup. So you have the shock absorber and you have the spring as two different units. Now with that being said, they get installed all in the rear in two different places. Let me show you how to swap that over. When it comes to working on the rear suspension, to make life easier, disconnect the sway bar so you can remove the control arms and spindle with more ease. So to swap out the spring and shock absorber, remove the camber arm bolt found here, followed by the lower shock mounting bolt. Once you have it removed, you'll be able to push down on the brake and hub assembly, which will remove the preload from the spring, allowing you to slide it out along with the upper rubber mount and then the lower one. Once you have this removed, move into the trunk area where you'll have to remove these three small plastic clips holding the carpet in place. Using a clip remover makes this a piece of cake. Then when you fold the carpet back, you'll have access to the upper shock mounting hardware. With the single nut removed, you can take off the steel washer found right below it. Jumping back into the wheel well area, you can pull down on the shock body to remove it as there's no longer anything securing it in place. During this install is also a good time to upgrade the bushings in your car like these ones here from Energy Suspension. I'll link them in the description box. After giving everything a quick wipe down, the car is now ready to receive its adjustable coilovers. However, I'm first going to swap out the rear camber arms. So you remember how I told you how the front suspension, how those slots in there allow you to change the camber on the car? Well, the rear factory camber arm doesn't allow you to change the suspension geometry whatsoever, which is where these bad boys come in. So these upgraded camber arms allow for that kind of adjustment, which means we can dial in our suspension and set it up properly. So we're gonna need two of these and one of these per side. Given that we have the rear knuckle disassembled, the last two mounting bolts are found inboard. Using a 14 mil socket, remove one bolt followed by the other, which will free up the arm. Then feel free to put some ATCs on the bolts prior to reinstalling them and then thread them in by hand until the new arm is secured. The other two metal sleeves will need to be inserted into the spherical end of the bushing. Now you can do some adjusting to the overall length of the camber arm by spinning the middle nut, but don't try and align the bolt to the knuckle just yet because the coilover spring first needs to be installed. Place the coilover spring with the perches in between the lower control arm and the body, followed by the shock absorber. Be sure to install the shock like this with the washer and sleeve pre-installed. Then slide a jack underneath the lower control arm and slowly raise the assembly until the rear spring is seated and under preload. That will allow you to thread the lower shock bolt to the bottom of the shock absorber. You can then align the camber arm and thread the factory bolt through it and the knuckle. With the jack still under the control arm, go into the trunk and reinstall the factory metal washer and nut on top of the shock absorber's threads. As far as adjusting the dampening and rebound, on the front top of the struts, you'll see this little knob that you can rotate. As for the rears, there's this little adjuster that you need to place into the shock absorber after you have them installed on the car and they simply drop into place. Once you have that done, you can rotate the dampening adjustment clockwise or counterclockwise to make the dampening stiffer or softer. Now, if you guys wanna see how I fully adjust and set up these coilovers, you guys can click the link right here at the top of the screen. That's gonna direct you to another video where I'm gonna show you how to set up the suspension on the Civic. So once you have the hardware in, this now allows you to get the alignment dialed in however you like. Now, the one thing that we're not done with is the front suspension. So back here, we're done. We have the camber adjustment, ride height adjustment, dampening and rebound. We have the custom spring rate selected. Now we need to change the angle of the front control arms by installing that other piece I was telling you guys about from Aerogenics. All right, so next up, let's talk about this little unit right here. And the way that this thing gets installed is this goes in between the lower ball joint on the front suspension and the lower control arm on the Civic. So what this does is this drops and lowers the lower control arm in relation to the ball joint, which makes it so that when the control arm is bolted up to the car and everything, instead of the car being at a higher angle, it's going to be dropped down. So to install this, it's pretty straightforward. Depending on the age of your car, your ball joints might look pretty bad. 
So if you guys are planning on doing this install, it wouldn't be a half bad idea to find some replacement ball joint. So before going ahead and installing this little piece here from Aerogenics right in here, I'm first gonna show you something. So using a level, I'm gonna put one end to the outboard position of the control arm and the other on the inboard end. Now you can see that when I put this level up here, touching both bolts and putting my level here, you can see that the angle is about three degrees. Now, when you compare this to the other side, you'll note that it's different. On the driver side, you can tell that this is installed. And when we do the exact same thing, put the level on one bolt, inboard to outboard, and we put our phone up to it with a level, you can see this is negative one degree. So you can tell that there is multiple degrees that this control arm here is angled down lower than the opposite side. So when we install this for both sides, our suspension is gonna articulate better. Now, as far as the install for this little billet piece, let me show you how to get that done. Using a 17 millimeter socket with an impact or wrench, take off the two nuts here and the one bolt found here. So loosen them up first, don't take them out yet because we need to make sure that we can remove the upper section of the ball joint before we take these out. Using a pick tool or set of needle nose pliers, remove the cotter pin going through the ball joint. Set it aside for now as we'll need to reuse it later during the reassembly. Following that, use a 19 mil wrench to crack the castle nut loose and begin to unthread it from the ball joint. Then, using a pry bar or a pickle fork, separate the ball joint from the knuckle. Keeping the castle nut slightly threaded on the threads prevents the control arm from swinging down during this procedure. Now, if yours is a real pain and doesn't want to come out, you might need to use a proper tool to separate this part. I'll link a very helpful kit in the description box that I use whenever I'm working on front suspension. Continue with loosening the castle nut until you can remove the lower ball joint completely from the knuckle, followed by the lower two nuts and single bolt going through the control arm. After you give the ball joint a slight clean, we're going to get started with removing the two studs. So I'm gonna be showing you two different ways to get this done. As you can tell here, I'm gonna start off with using a press to remove one of the studs. Place a 19 mil deep socket underneath the stud that you want to remove and start increasing the pressure on the press until the stud pops out of place and falls into the socket. Now, what if you don't have a press? Grab your ball joint and place it over top of the same 19 millimeter socket. But instead of using the press to carefully extract this stud, we're gonna be a bit more aggressive using a hammer. I also suggest doing this while the ball joint is off of the car Otherwise, if you're gonna be doing this banging with a hammer with it attached to the car, you might prematurely fail your ball joint. Go back to the car and throw the lower ball joint back into the knuckle. Now, to install the roll center spacers, you'll want to install it with the beveled edge facing up and the aerogenics text facing the lower control arm. Slide it between the bottom side of the ball joint and the top side of the control arm. From the bottom, place the included bolt and washer through the entire assembly followed by the nut on top of the ball joint. Replicate the same thing for the other hole on the ball joint. Now, as far as the middle bolt is concerned, it does not require a nut as the top of the ball joint itself is threaded. So position the bolt through the arm and the spacer and thread it into place. You can then continue to fasten all of the lower ball joint bolts and torque them to the factory spec. Don't forget to tighten the lower ball joint castle nut and align the groove of the nut with the hole in the ball joint so you can reinstall the cotter pin. With everything all said and done, the angle for this control arm with the suspension not under load is going to be the same thing as the other side, which is negative one degree. Now, as far as these other two components, I don't necessarily want to install them on the car. So for these front SPC cam bolts, we do not need to install these on the front suspension of the car because the top hats of the coilovers have enough camber adjustment. Now to install it, what you would do is you'd first start off with replacing this front top bolt with the aftermarket bolt from SPC. And if you need more camber than that, you'll replace this lower one too. And what that does is it allows you to move the top part of the knuckle in relation to the coilover or the lower shock mount. And you can either pull the top in to give you more camber, or you can push the bottom part here out. It'll work the same way, but as it stands, I don't need to install them. Now this component here from Trueheart gets installed on the rear subframe of the car. Now, unfortunately, we do not want to install this back here because there's no actual benefit to installing this given that this piece doesn't properly secure itself up to the chassis of the car. 
So what I'm going to do is leave this setup here as is, but if you did want to install it, all you would do is take out the two lower bolts, one here, one here, throw this back on the car. However, when you reinstall the rear diffuser section of the car, you will never see that true heart component. It's not functional, you can't see it. So in my mind, it doesn't make sense to pull trigger on this piece. Now that you have all those hardware parts upgraded on the car, it is now time to change out the most important part of this, and that is the specs. So that is ensuring that the preload, the ride height, the camber, the caster, all that stuff is all set where it needs to be so that you can take advantage of all of these upgraded components. Now, if you don't do that, it's gonna be no better than factory. If anything, it might even be worse. So there's a couple things that you'll want to consider, you know, performance, ride quality, convenience, I'm gonna go over all that stuff in the next video, but in the meantime, if you wanna take a look at any of the parts that I installed on the Civic, you guys can find all of that information in the description box. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Peace. If you stayed till this part, yes, I'm gonna address all the upgrades in the garage, like the hoist. Stay tuned.